This video will cover the rampant appliance. During chrome surgeries, doctors will use two different prosthetics. One that the patient will wear home, the take-home prosthetic, and the other is the rampant appliance. The rampant, appli rampant appliance and the take-home prosthetic are identical, but the rampant appliance is just a monochromatic prosthetic that is picked up during surgery, and it's picked up in all three chrome uh, versions, whether it's standard chrome, small hole technology, or no hole technology with smile lock. So the rapid appliance is picked up sitting on the carrier guide and it is held until uh, it's time to restore the case. And at this point, the doctor has uh, two different choices. One choice is to uh, use the rapid appliance to send the records to the laboratory or doctor can use the prosthetics that the patient has been wearing for the past six months to send to the laboratory. Both processes are, uh, are very similar. And what we've always recommended in the past is that you use the rapid appliance to transfer the records. And what that would mean is when the patient uh, presents, remove the prosthetics the patient's been wearing, put tray adhesive on the intaglio of the rapid appliances, seat the rapid appliance or both, depending on if it's single or double arch, seat them, equilibrate them until the bite is just right, and then backfill a reline impression uh, in order to capture the new tissue levels. And then once that's completed, take a physical bite registration, PVS or Blue Moose, and then remove the, remove the bite, remove the prosthetics with the uh, reline impressions in place, uh, and send to the laboratory and order a printed try-in, or perhaps in a case like this, you might even go directly to final. Now, if there are changes to be made, uh, which usually there are, you know, in size edge, or there might be some little discrepancies, uh, take some photographs with these in the mouth so that we can see those discrepancies. Uh, and we really don't need too many retracted photos. It's really more full face, full smile. And then uh, we're off and going, right? So upper, uh, you know, prosthetic, reline impression, bite registration, photographs, and this will be returned to the laboratory. And in most cases, the, uh, the printed try-ins are uh, monochromatic, right? They're just for a look-see chair side uh, to confirm the bite, the fit, aesthetics, contour, etc. cetera. Uh, but in some cases, doctors like to add pink. There's a little extra charge for that um, uh, per arch, uh, but then the patient really gets to test drive the prosthetic, and they could wear this for a week, two weeks, uh, perhaps even a month. Uh, it's a very strong material. I would definitely be careful with cantilevers if the patient's going to wear it for, you know, longer than a week or so, uh, but they can really test drive it. And then this would be physically sent back, maybe some minor equilibration, physically sent back with a new bite, and then we go to final. So that is the rapid appliance at its a very straightforward approach. There's another uh, rapid appliance uh, that was that was in the laboratory that we noticed. We want to make some notes on. Is this case was planned for six implants, right? But only four were loaded. So you can see that these middle, uh, these middle four implants, two implants, two implants were not loaded, and that so the doctor just simply did follow the same procedure, um, and these were um, probably not placed. But the point of this is, is that often uh, an implant or two are not loaded during surgery and, uh, and, and therefore they're just, uh, they're just buried. Now, when the patient comes for the uh, restorative process and the implants were placed but not loaded, you would simply place the abutments, place temp copings, and then just like surgery, you would loot the prosthetic to the temp copings to pick them up. Right, so you, then you would send in the case with all six implants or however many implants were placed, you would do the transfer at the time of restorative. So that's another wonderful use for the rapid appliance. It's a common occurrence, and so we thought we would share that in the use of the rapid appliance. The rapid appliance. This video will discuss what to include for the final restorative steps of a chrome guided smile case. At the time of restoration, you'll have two prosthetics or in this case, double arch four prosthetics, you'll have the rapid appliances that were picked up during surgery, and you'll also have the take-home prosthetics that the patient is wearing. 
we have been recommending that you that the doctor sends the take-home prosthetics to the laboratory. The bite has been worked out. The patient has, has become accustomed to the aesthetics, the gingival placement, the tooth shape, tooth form, and can clearly give, clearly give indication of what they would like changed. And because the bite has really worked out well over the past few months or several months, this is the ideal record to send to the laboratory. In both instances, the prosthetics or sending in the rapid appliances, the doctor will perform a reline impression, will equilibrate, and will send a bite registration. Those are the three most important aspects. We also like to have photographs of the patient with full smile, uh, lips at rest, full smile, and then a profile picture if needed. Uh, you can send retracted pictures if you need to show where any there, there's any metal exposure or any uh, any 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 oddities. Uh, but otherwise, really full face, full smile, and then full smile up close are the best pictures to send. Now, the other things to send are very important as well, which are implant brand. We want to know which implants are in the mouth. We have a record of it, but things change. And sometimes doctors will use um, uh, uh, clone implants or different systems. We want to know exactly the brand and size of each site. Also, please let us know if you want anything other than third-party parts. We use FDA-cleared 510K parts that are included in the Chrome full package, the prepaid package. But if you would like OEM parts included in this, then the fee will usually be, will almost always be a little bit higher, so just expect a little bit higher bill in the end, uh, but we are happy to use either our parts or uh, OEM parts, just let us know. So that is uh, prosthetic, reline impression with some tray adhesive, so it doesn't come off, bite registration, obviously the prosthetics, um, hopefully the prosthetics the patient's been wearing, and photographs, implant brand and size, and then whether you want OEM or not. If you choose to, uh, to send the patient home in the, in the more aesthetic prosthetic, I'm sorry, forgive me, in the, in the send the patient home in the rapid appliance, then you can adjust the rapid appliance to smooth off the edges you could also send it to uh, the laboratory and we could add some pink to this, there's a little charge for it, but we could make this much more aesthetic and smooth and fill the holes and so it's more comfortable for the patient. So those are the records to send with uh, the rapid appliance or final restorative steps. Verifying the rapid appliance. It is very important, as with all full arch restorations, that the prosthetic seat passively and intimately with all of the either implant level or the multi-unit level componentry. And what that means is that each one of these sites must fit perfectly onto the implant or the multi-unit abutment. If any of these do not, then it is highly likely that the final prosthetic will fracture under, under pressure from torquing the screws in. So how do you verify a rapid appliance six months after surgery? You will seat the, seat the rapid appliance and just finger tighten the screws and take an x-ray. That's one way. And then in the x-ray, you'll be able to tell if there is any, uh, any gap at all in any of these sites. Another way to tell is do one screw test. Just simply place one screw in the, in the uh, terminal implant uh, or one implant in the other side in the terminal implant, just one and see if there is any rock at all in the prosthetic. Now, if tissue is holding it up, uh, that could be, could be a little bit of an issue, but generally in prosthetics, uh, in, in chrome prosthetics, the tissue is just a little bit elevated. So tissue should not be holding it up unless they're really deep, uh, deep sites. Um, perform that on, uh, the, so perform the one screw test and take an x-ray. If you find that there is a gap or a, uh, a wobble, then it is very, very important that you section the prosthetic and use this as a, uh, a really a perfect uh, fit verification jig. So if you can identify the area specifically, then you could just section that area and then screw down, let's, let's, let's just say it's this implant that there's a gap on the x-ray. Section this part here, 
loot, uh, seat both in the mouth and loot them together very carefully in the mouth. You can use Stellar, GC Pattern Resin, Duralea, different materials that don't shrink. Uh, not, not regular resin, it has a little shrinkage to it. And connect the two together and be sure to use a lot of material uh, because these will often break in transport if it's just a little, you know, little bead line around the outside. Okay, so, so section uh, any part that is, uh, that is not fitting right. Uh, you may end up sectioning more than, more, than one, uh, more than one area. Loot them together, send them in. And even after you section and loot, you still can probably equilibrate, do a reline impression, take a bite, and send it in and move forward to the printed try-in.